This presentation will examine the anatomy visible in the transverse plane of a computed axial tomographical image of the thorax. Transverse CT images are always observed from this orientation, as if we are sitting at the patient's feet. Therefore, this is right and this is left. This CT is of a 25-year-old male and contrast medium was injected prior to acquisition. Typically, contrast medium is an iodine-rich solution injected into the patient via an anticubital vein, which allows us to better visualize vessels. In this case, the medium was allowed to travel to the right heart, to the pulmonary circulation, the left heart, and then to the arterial system before the scan was taken. This allows us to see the arteries, so we say this scan was taken in the arterial phase. We will read this CT starting from inferior and moving superiorly. The inferior limit of our thoracic cavity is the inferior thoracic aperture. Posteriorly, this is at the level of the T12 vertebrae, here. It is articulating with the head of the 12th rib, here, at the costal vertebral joint. At this level, we can also see this, the liver, the spleen, and the pancreas. We can clearly see dark air bubbles which are occupying the transverse colon and the duodenum and we can see the descending thoracic aorta traversing the aortic hiatus with the diaphragmatic crura on either side giving off the celiac trunk. Posterior to the liver we can also see the inferior vena cava, in this case receiving the inferior phrenic vein. The dark areas which we can see here are the costodiaphragmatic recesses which are containing pleural fluid. As we move superiorly, we can start to see the pyloric sphincter. This is marking the junction of the duodenum with the stomach. We can also identify muscles in the thoracic wall. Here are the rectus abdominis muscles with their underlying superior epigastric vessels. Here are the intercostal muscles. We can also start to see some of the superior aspects of the external oblique and the transverse abdominis muscles. Posteriorly, we can see the erector spinae and transversal spinale muscle groups. More laterally, we can also see the latissimus dorsi muscle. Also, we can see the spinal cord traversing the vertebral canal. As we move to vertebral level T11, we can start to see the right and left crura of the diaphragm and how the esophagus is beginning to penetrate the right crus. This is marking our gastroesophageal junction. The profiles of the abdominal organs are beginning to diminish as we begin to move through the diaphragm. At the T10 level, we can see the profiles of two veins here, either side of the thoracic aorta. These are the azygous and hemiazygous veins. Also visible are the posterior intercostal veins which are draining into these vessels. We are now almost completely above the level of the diaphragm. We can begin to see parts of the pericardium and heart. Here is the left ventricle. Here are the posterior interventricular vessels. At this level, which we call the low cardiac level, we are beginning to see the right ventricle, which is separated from the left ventricle by the interventricular septum. We can follow the posterior interventricular artery more proximally to where it is becoming the right coronary artery. Also at this level, we can begin to see the inferior angle of the scapula. As we follow the inferior vena cava upwards, we enter the right atrium. Note also at this level, which is approximately T8 vertebral level, we can see where the hemiozygous vein is draining into the ozygous vein on the right here. We can see the paired posterior intercostal arteries, which are emerging from the thoracic aorta here. At this level, we can begin to see the left atrium, which is the most posterior chamber of the heart. Here, we can see some of the right pulmonary veins, which are draining into this left atrium. And here, we can see a left pulmonary vein also draining into the left atrium. We can also see some more of the axioappendicular muscles at this level. Here is the trapezius. Here is rhomboid major, here we have serratus anterior, and here latissimus dorsi. Highlighted in green, we have some of the rotator cuff muscles. We are now at the so-called high cardiac level. 
The small vein that we can see now on the left is the accessory hemiozygous. We are now beginning to see the right and left main bronchi, which are highlighted here in green. The left ventricle has narrowed to form the aorta, and branching from it here, we can see the right coronary artery. We are also beginning to see the profile of the anterior interventricular artery, also known as the left anterior descending artery. It is running in the interventricular sulcus, and now we can see where it branches from the left coronary artery with the circumflex artery. Also at this level, we can begin to see the superior vena cava draining into the right atrium. We can see the uppermost part of the left atrium, which forms the oracle, and we can see the inferior part of the pulmonary trunk. This is in continuity with the right pulmonary artery here. Here, we can see the junction of the left coronary artery with the ascending aorta. Now at this level, which we call the main pulmonary art artery level, we can see the left pulmonary artery. We can also see the left and right main bronchi, which are highlighted in green. These are coming closer to the midline and will unite at the carina to form the trachea, which is approximately at T4 to T5 retriever level. This is what we call the level of the aortopulmonary window. This aortopulmonary window is a small space inferior to the aortic arch and superior to the pulmonary artery, which contains the left recurrent laryngeal nerve. This is also approximately at the level of the angle of Louis or sternal angle. This level is significant as it marks the limits of the aortic arch. And this is why, as we move superiorly, we can see the two profiles of the aorta joining to form a single profile at the aortic arch level. Also at this level, we can see the azygous vein joining the superior vena cava here. As we move upwards, we can see the vessels emanating from the arch of the aorta and also from the superior vena cava. Here we can see the formation of the superior vena cava from the right and left brachiocephalic veins. Branching from the aortic arch, we can see the brachiocephalic trunk, the left common carotid artery, and the left subclavian artery. When we see the brachiocephalic veins as two distinct profiles here, we call this level the five vessel level. Moving more superiorly, we can see the brachiocephalic trunk branching into the right common carotid and the right subclavian arteries. Also at this level, we can see the clavicle, which is articulating here with the minubrium of the sternum at the sternoclavicular joint. Further superiorly, we see where the humerus here is articulating with the glenoid cavity of the scapula at the glenohumeral joint. We see the right brachiocephalic vein being formed by the right internal jugular vein and the right subclavian vein here. Also, we can see these vessels on the left, here and here. Also visible at this level is the coracoid process of the scapula. We can also see the associated pectoralis minor muscle and external to that, the pectoralis major muscle. As we proceed upwards, we can see the acromial end of the clavicle articulating with the acromion of the scapula here at the acromioclavicular joint. Also at this level, we can see the sternocleidomastoid muscles and the deeper strap muscles of the neck. We can also see the thyroid gland, which is anterior to the trachea, in purple. We have now reached just above the level of the superior thoracic aperture, also known as the thoracic inlet, sometimes known clinically as the thoracic outlet. This is bounded by the T1 vertebrae, the first pair of ribs and their costal cartilages, and the manubrium of the sternum. A run-through of the same CT scan which we have examined will follow this presentation. You can use this to test yourself. Thank you for listening.